Listen to a reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Let us listen to God's holy and God's living word. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them to tell no one about him. Then he began to teach that he, the Son of Man, must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the wisdom of the universe, and you... And yet you bear the pain of your people. Grant to us the gift of wisdom, so that we may discern your way and live justly and graciously amid all the struggles of this world. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What a glorious day. It's so wonderful to gather here in the front lawn with all of you here. We've been pent up for 18 months. And yes, we still have a ways to go with the Delta variant and the COVID protocols, but it is wonderful to be the church again, even if we are outside at this time and in this place. It's appropriate that our gospel reading today, Jesus is asking his followers an extremely pointed question. Who do you say that I am? This question has puzzled me as I approach the sermon for this occasion. Should I stay light and funny on rally day, keeping the sermon more broad and shallow? Or should I go much deeper? Our gospel lesson turns on questions of identity. Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? His disciples respond with the following theories. John the Baptist, who had just recently died. Elijah, who ascended to heaven without dying, and whose return was thought by some to be the first sign of the coming of the Messiah. Or others thought perhaps one of the other prophets from the Old Testament returned from the dead. But Jesus does not respond to any of these theories. Instead, he pushes them further, asking them yet again, 
but who do you say that I am? I think the question Jesus is asking is perhaps the heart of the Christian faith. If it was Jesus here today asking each of us this same question as he looked into our eyes, who do you say that I am? Isn't that really what church is all about? Helping one another, helping each other discover who Jesus is? And more specifically, isn't it the mission that defines us here at Indian Hill Church? A calling to help one another grow in faith and define who Jesus is in our lives? So I would like to tell you that today we are committed to helping you on that journey. We're committed to teaching you what the Bible says about Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus claimed this special title and his relationship as the Son of God that defined his divinity. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I and the Father are one, Jesus says. He also says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. So remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. He says on the cross. The Bible also says that Jesus is the Son of Man. The Son of Man means that Jesus was both human, fully human and divine, being the Son of God. He was given authority from God. But the Son of Man occurs frequently in the Old Testament as a synonym for humanity, human being. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. In the book of Acts, Stephen says that he sees heaven open and the Son of Man is standing at the right hand of God. The Bible also tells us that Jesus is the Lamb of God, the Messiah. The Messiah who must be crucified for the forgiveness of our sins. Then he began to teach that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. The Bible also says that Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching, proclaiming, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. Among the largest group of miracles mentioned in the New Testament, Jesus spends his time curing people. He cured the deaf, the blind, he healed lepers, paralytics, hemorrhaging women, a woman sick for 18 years, a man with dropsy, a man with a withered hand. He performed multiple exorcisms. And finally, his greatest of all miracles, Jesus raised three people from the dead. Remember Jairus' daughter? The little known story about the young man who fell out of the window and died in Nain? Jesus raised him from the dead. And also Jesus raised his good friend Lazarus from death. And oh, of course, Jesus' greatest miracle of all, his own resurrection. We're also committed here to teach you what the church says, be it Episcopal, be it Presbyterian, but most importantly, what Christians believe about Jesus. We have spent history writing down what we believe about Jesus The Nicene Creed, often used in the Episcopal Church, says that Jesus was eternally begotten and the only Son of God the Father. And he is the one being with the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The Presbyterian brief statement of faith says that Jesus, fully human, fully God, Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor, release to the captive, teaching by word and deed, blessing the children, healing the sick, 
binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. And every week we say in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. However, I imagine if you're like me, on some level, these are just words. We say them, we listen to them, we try to believe them, but on some level, they're just words. So we, the Indian Hill Church, must be committed to supporting each of you in your journey to understand who Jesus is. And another way to put it is, to make these words real and to make them tangible. I must be honest and say that I cannot answer for each of you who Jesus is. So I will describe who Jesus is for me. At this point in my ministry, but oh, much more important at this point in my life, I want to consider Jesus. I can give you the theological answer. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I can give you a biblical answer that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. But I really want to look deep within my heart and my soul. And so I would respond by Jesus is a great physician and healer. But he's also the one to point out my sin and brokenness. Yes, he forgives sin. Yes, he offers grace, but it's not cheap grace, it's costly. It's a grace that challenges me. It challenges me to take up my cross and to follow him. Yes, Jesus comforts me in my afflictions, in my hurts and my pains, but he afflicts me in my comfort. Yes, he's my Lord and Savior, but he challenges me. He challenges me to be more open, more accepting, more understanding of others. Yes, he's God's Son, sent to save the world and to love even me, for the Bible tells me so. He loves me so much that he died for my sin. He loves me enough not to let me live in it. Jesus is everything but so much more to all of us. He is God, he is Savior, mediator, sacrificial lamb for our sin, advocate, comforter, Lord. But Jesus is also a disruptor. Jesus disrupts my life, my comfort. And most of the time, if I'm brutally honest, I don't wanna be disrupted. I don't wanna care about the rest of the world. I wanna care about me my family, and our well-being. But Jesus disrupts that and calls me to care more about the world, about Afghanistan and Haiti and inner-city Minneapolis and rural Mississippi, clean water in Flint, Michigan, and voting rights in Georgia and fires in California and global warming and powerful hurricanes, hunger in Lower Price Hill, homelessness anywhere, and educational discrepancies everywhere. The rights and privileges of LGBTQ people and the existence of Native Americans. The rights and privileges of all. And if I could just keep Jesus in a box and worry about myself and my own well-being, then life would be so much easier but Jesus won't let that happen because Jesus calls me, Jesus challenges me, and Jesus disrupts me and wants me to be open beyond myself to the world. So as much as I want this day to be fun, as much as I want Rally Day to be about listening to Dixieland music from the Cincinnati River Rats and 
spending time together watching a juggler, eating a picnic lunch, and socializing, socially distanced, of course, and getting excited about this new church year, I have to be honest, I can't help but invite us all to dig deeper, to realize that Jesus is at Jesus is on the move and at work in our lives and our hearts and in our souls. And what we do here at Indian Hill Church matters. Because what we believe in impacts our lives, how we spend our money, how we spend our time, how we vote, how we live. And so I hope this scripture has opened up for you that it's now your turn. I invite you to contemplate and to ponder Jesus' question. Who do you say that I am? It's our work as the Indian Hill Church to work with you to help us all better understand our response. May it be so in your life and in mine as we seek to tell others and ourselves just exactly who Jesus is. Amen.